Question 1. Which of these types of computers would be a good choice for a salesperson who spends most of the day visiting customers? A. Mainframe computer. B. Network computer. C. Personal computer. D. Laptop. E. E. D. A. The correct answer is D. E. Mobile professionals typically need to carry their essential data with them to customer sites. Laptops and PDS are inherently portable computers, suited for such visits. Answers A, B, and C are incorrect because those types of computer are not designed to be mobile. Question 2. Which of the following are classed as input devices? A keyboard. B plotter. C trackball. D touchscreen. The correct answer is A, C, D. Keyboard and trackballs are designed to let you transmit information to the computer, making them input. Devices. Touchscreens are both input devices and output devices, they can both accept and display information. Answer B is incorrect because a plotter is used only to convey information from the computer to you, making it an output device. Question 3. You have a customer data file that is approximately 45 megabytes in size. You need to have fast access to any part of this file and to edit information that it contains frequently. Which of these storage devices would be most appropriate for storing this file? A. Zip disk. B. Data cartridge. C. CD-ROM. D. Hard drive. The correct answer is D. A hard drive can store large files, provide fast access to any part of the file, and allows you to edit the data that it contains. Answer A is incorrect because the file is too large to fit on a zip disk. Answer B is incorrect because data cartridges are typically quite slow. Answer C is incorrect because the CD-ROM does not allow you to edit the data that it contains. Question 4. Which of the following are benefits of connecting the computers at a company into a LAN? A. Saving files in a common format. B. Sharing one plotter among every user in a group. C. Enabling M and email. D. Loading applications more quickly. The correct answer is B. C. When computers are networked, expensive resources such as plotters and high-speed printers can be easily shared. Among many users. Users on a LAN can also use email, instant messaging, M, and other collaborative technologies. Answers A and D incorrect because saving files and loading applications are functions of the individual computer rather than the network. Question 5. You need to share a file with another employee of your company. You are located in the Cincinnati office, and your coworker is in the Iowa City office. Which network would provide you with the most secure way to share the file? A. Intranet. B. Internet. C. Extranet. D. World Wide Web. The correct answer is A. An intranet is a company's internal network, to which outsiders have no access. Answer B is incorrect because the internet is the global WAM and is shared by millions of users. Answer C is incorrect because an extranet is designed for sharing information with corporate partners. Answer D is incorrect because the World Wide Web is used for publishing and viewing web pages. Question 6. Which of these factors should you consider when designing an ergonomically correct computer workspace? A. The height of the monitor. B. The location of the keyboard. C. The color of the mouse pad. D. The level of lighting. The correct answer is A. B. D. The height of the monitor is important in minimizing neck strain. The location of the keyboard is important in minimizing wrist and arm injuries. The level of lighting is important in minimizing eye strain. Answer C is incorrect because mouse pad colors have not been shown to have a health effect. Question 7. Which of these potential passwords complies with typical rules for good passwords? A. Dog. B. 16 Tons Ujit. C. Alice. D. 1,774,324. The correct answer is B. Answers A and C are incorrect because good passwords are at least 7 characters long. Answer A is incorrect because dictionary words do not make good passwords. Answer D is incorrect because a good password should contain a mix of character types, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numerals, and symbols. Question 8. Which of the following security measures can help protect you from computer viruses? A. Select a strong password for your account. B. Back up your critical data once every 10 days. C. Only open email attachments that you are expecting to be sent. D. Keep your antivirus software up to date. The correct answer is C. D. Email attachments are a popular way for viruses to spread. By not opening unexpected attachments, you protect yourself from this risk. Antivirus software can block many viruses, but only if you keep it updated so that it will recognize new viruses. Answer A is incorrect because strong passwords keep other people from using your account but do not stop virus software from running when your machine is infected. 
Answer B is incorrect because a backup will make it possible to recover lost data, but won't stop a virus from deleting data in the first place. Question 9. Which of the following activities is permissible under copyright law? A. Downloading a bootleg copy of a new rock CD from the internet. B. Making a backup of a software program is permitted by the EULA. C. Typing an article from a current magazine and making CD-ROM copies for your friends. D. Scanning photographs from a coffee table book for use as computer wallpaper. The correct answer is B. The EULA is a legal agreement that permits specific actions. Answers A, C, and D are incorrect because they all make copies of works without the express permission of the work's creator. Question 10. Which of the following jobs is a good candidate for teleworking? A. Screening patients for admission to a hospital. B. Managing a team of inventory takers for a supermarket chain. C. Entering insurance claims information. D. Caring for hydroponic cucumber plants in a greenhouse. The correct answer is C. Entering claims information is work that can be done anywhere that there is a computer. Answer A is incorrect because teleworkers don't interact directly with clients. Answer B is incorrect because telework makes it difficult to organize and participate in a team. Answer D is incorrect because telework does not allow you to perform actual physical labor. Question 11. Which of the following is the safest and most efficient way to react to a non-responding program? A. Turn off the computer by flipping the CPU's on slash off switch. B. Unplug the CPU at the electrical source. C. Press Ctrl Alt Delete and choose Restart from the shutdown menu. D. Click the Start button on the taskbar and choose Turn Off Computer. The correct answer is C. This particular keystroke combination will restart your computer and clear the internal error that's causing the problem. Answers A and B are incorrect and could result in serious harm to your data in any open software applications. Answer D is incorrect because you won't be able to access the start button. Question 12. Which of the following removable storage media must you prepare by formatting before you can use them? A. CD-ROM. B. Floppy diskette. C. Internal hard drive. D. Zip disk. The correct answer is B. D. You must format a floppy or zip disk before you can store data on them. Answers A and C are wrong. A CD-ROM needs no preparation and you should probably never format your internal hard drive yourself. Hard drives must be formatted initially but after that, you don't need to format it again. Occasionally when things go wrong, reformatting a hard drive is necessary, but it's best to leave that task to the experts. Question 13. Which of the following are legitimate window operations? A. Moving it. B. Opening it. C. Resizing it. D. Deleting it. E. Closing it. The correct answer is A, B, C, E. You can manipulate a window by opening, closing, resizing, or moving it. Answer D is incorrect because you can't actually delete a window although you can close it when you're done. Question 14. Which of the following are legitimate elements in a window? A. Title bar. B. Status bar. C. Toolbar. D. Shortcut icon. E. File. The correct answer is A, B, C. Neither a shortcut icon nor a file is a window element. Question 15. Why might you want to create a copy, known as a backup, of your work? A. In case the computer's hard drive is corrupted or the system is incapacitated by theft, damage, or virus. B. In case the original file is accidentally deleted. C. To protect your system from a virus. D. For reverse engineering purposes. E. Bought at your work for the purposes of quality control. The correct answer is A. B. Backups are created to protect your work in case of equipment or file failure. C. Is incorrect because creating a backup will not protect your system from a virus although having a non-infected backup would be helpful in the event of attack. Answers D and E have nothing to do with creating a backup. Question 16. Which sequence of events would you use to add a folder to your hard drive? A. Open the control panel window and select Add New Folder. B. Launch the Windows Explorer, choose New from the File menu, and then select the location for the new subfolder. C. Launch the Windows Explorer, locate the file to which you want to add the new subfolder, and choose New from the File menu. D. Launch the Windows Explorer, Locate the drive and folder to which you're adding the new subfolder, and then choose new from the file menu. The correct answer is D. Answer A is incorrect because no such command exists in the control panel window. Answer B is incorrect because you must select the folder to which you're adding the subfolder before executing the new command. Answer C is incorrect because you can't add a folder or subfolder to a file. Question 17. Where will you find the Windows Help and Support feature? A. In the control panel window. B. On any menu. C. On the desktop. D. On the start menu. The correct answer is A. D. Although many menus sport a help menu. 
it is application-specific and isn't connected with the Windows Help feature. Although you could add a shortcut icon to the desktop that launches the help and support, there isn't one by default. Question 18. Which sequence of events would successfully add a shortcut icon to the desktop? A. In the Windows Explorer, choose File, Create New Shortcut. B. Right-click the Explorer window and choose Create New Shortcut. C. In the Windows Explorer, right-click the file to which you want to create a shortcut. Then, right-click the new shortcut file in the same folder, select Send To, and then choose Desktop, Create Shortcut. D. In the Windows Explorer, select the file you want to create a shortcut to and then click the shortcut icon on the toolbar. The correct answer is C. Answer A is incorrect because you must select the file you're creating the shortcut for first. Answer B is incorrect for the same reason. Answer D is incorrect because there is no shortcut icon on the Explorer toolbar. Question 19. Why might you compress a folder or file? A. To save space on the storage medium. B. To improve overall performance. C. To repair the folder or file. D. To reduce the size of the file or folder. The correct answer is A. B. D. Answer C is incorrect because the compression process will not repair any corruption problems the file might have. Question 20. Which of the following will the standard word processing application do? A. Allow you to work with more than one document at a time. B. Help you analyze numbers and accounting elements. C. Offer options for saving and formatting text in a professional and appropriate manner. D. Help you personalize form letters quicker and more efficiently. The correct answer is A. C. D. A word processing application is capable of multitasking, helping you format text, and providing mail merge capabilities. Answer B is incorrect. Although some word processing applications can calculate simple mathematical operations with values in tables, that isn't its primary focus and the feature is usually limited. Question 21. When working with more than one document, how do you switch between documents? A. Choose a document from the window menu. B. Choose a minimized document icon from the Windows taskbar. C. Press F6. D. Press Alt plus Tab to cycle through all the windows. The correct answer is A. B. Answer D is correct but not the most efficient method because the keystroke combination cycles through all the open windows on your system, not just the open word processing documents. Answer C is incorrect, it does not select an open but an active window. Question 22. You can do which of the following with text in a word processing document, A. Enter, edit, and delete it. B. Automatically translate it to another language. C. Move it from one document to another. D. Copy it from one area of the document to another. The correct answer is A. C. D. You can enter, edit, delete, move, and copy text in a word processing application. Answer B is incorrect. Word does not offer any automatic translation facilities. Question 23 How would you replace a multiple occurring word or phrase? A. Find each occurrence and override it with the new text. B. Hold down the control key while highlighting each occurrence and then replacing them all at one time. C. Use the find and replace feature. The correct answer is C. Answer A would work but would be very inefficient. Answer B is incorrect. Question 24. You can apply formatting at many levels throughout your document. Which of the following is a legitimate formatting level within in a normal document? A. Object. B. Paragraph. C. Printer. D. Text. E. Document. The correct answer is B. D. E. Answer A is incorrect, although you can format an object such as a picture, that formatting is unique to the object. Answer C is incorrect, you can't format text at the printer level because there's no such level. Question 25. Most word processors are flexible when it comes to printing the document. Match the following settings to the results listed below. A pages option is set to 18 B number of copies setting is set to 3 C pages option is set to 1 A D page range option is set to all 1. Pages 1 and 8 2. All the pages in the document 3. Pages 1 through 8 4. 3 copies of the specified pages. The correct answer is A equals 3, B equals 4, C equals 1, D equals 2. Question 26. When checking your document for spelling errors, you can do the following, A enter the corrected spelling yourself. B enter the corrected spelling from an online dictionary service. C ignore the spelling because it's correct, even if word highlights it as suspect. D add the word to the dictionary so word won't stop at it again. The correct answer is A, C, D. Answer B is incorrect. You can use an online dictionary service to discern the correct spelling, but there's no built-in mechanism for automating that process from Word. Question 27. Which of the following would you automate using a mail merge? A. Printing file labels. B. 
be printing name tags for a public meeting. C. Personalizing a form letter for several recipients. D. Printing envelopes. The correct answer is A, B, C. Answer D is incorrect. Word prints envelopes, but it isn't part of the mail merge process. Question 28. What are the main components of a mail merge? A. Main document, data source document, and the merge document. B. Paper, envelopes, and mailing labels. C. Mailing list and the postage meter. The correct answer is A. Answers B and C are incorrect. You might need all these things to actually print and mail your document, but they aren't part of Word's mail merge process. Question 29. How can you tell whether a picture is selected? A. It's highlighted. B. It's maximized to consume the entire screen. C. The picture display selection handles in the border. D. The border turns red. The correct answer is C. Answers A, B, and D are all incorrect. Question 30. You need to transfer data from Microsoft Excel to another application. Which of these formats can you use to save your Excel file? A. Microsoft Word, dot doc. B. Dbase, dot dbf. C. Text, dot text. D. Microsoft Access, dot mdb. E. Bitmap, dot bmp. The correct answer is B, C. Excel can save files to a variety of text, spreadsheet, and database formats, including plain text and dbase. Answers A, D, and E are incorrect because Excel cannot directly save files in those formats. Question 31. Which of these techniques can you use to modify the Excel user interface? A. Remove menus that you never use. B. Show toolbars that are normally hidden. C. Change the text of menu items. D. Zoom in so text appears larger. The correct answer is A, B, D. You can right-click in the toolbar area and choose which toolbars to display. And you can use the zoom control or control plus mouse wheel to zoom in on hard-to-read text. Answers A and C are incorrect because Excel does not allow you to modify its built-in menus. Question 32. You want to refer to a rectangular group of cells in a formula. The cells in the array should be A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, and B3. Which cell range reference should you use? A. A1 B3. B. A1 colon A2 A3 colon B1 colon B2 colon B3. C. A1 colon B3. D. A13 colon B13. The correct answer is C. To refer to a rectangular cell range, you specify the upper left and lower right corners, separated by a colon. Answers A, B, and D are incorrect because they are not valid Excel references. Question 33. Cell C4 of your worksheet contains a complex formula that took you several hours to develop. You want to type some text in cell D4, but you accidentally type it in cell C4 instead, replacing your formula. What should you do? A. Close the worksheet without saving, and reopen it from the hard drive. B. Recreate your formula from memory. C. Open the worksheet with the same name and the extension. Block from your hard drive. D. Press Ctrl plus Z. The correct answer is D. Ctrl plus Z is the keyboard shortcut for the undo function, which removes the typing and returns your formula. Answer A is incorrect because unless you've just saved the worksheet, the copy on disk won't contain all your work. Answer B is incorrect because it would be more work than necessary. Answer C is incorrect because Excel does not maintain automatic backups. Question 34. Which formula should you place in cell C5 to show the results of adding the value in cell A2 to the value in cell B2? A. A2 B2. B. Equals A2 plus B2. C. A2 plus B2. D. A2 plus B2. The correct answer is B. To start a formula, you must use an equal sign. Answer A is incorrect because it is a cell range reference, not a formula. Answer C is incorrect because it doesn't start with an equal sign. Answer D is incorrect because the single quote is used to indicate literal text, not a formula. Question 35. Which formula should you use to calculate the total of the numbers in cells C2, D2, E2, and F2? A equals some C2 colon F2. B equals count C2 colon F2. C equals some C2 plus D2 plus E2 plus F2. D equals count C2 plus D2 plus E2 plus F2. The correct answer is A. To calculate the total, you need to use the sum. Function in a cell range reference. Answers B and D are incorrect because the count function counts cells with values, it doesn't calculate their totals. Answers C and D are incorrect because the sum and count functions require a cell range, not a set of cells. Question 36. You place the formula equals odd 1 plus 2 Australian dollars in cell A3. Now you copy cell A3 to cell B3. What will be the formula in cell B3? 
A, equals odd 1 plus 2 Australian dollars. B, equals odd 2 plus 3 Australian dollars. C, equals BSD 2 plus 3 Bahamian dollars. D, equals BSD 1 plus 2 Bahamian dollars. The correct answer is D. Answer A is incorrect because the formula hasn't updated at all. Answer B is incorrect because the dollar character makes the row numbers absolute but not the column reference. Answer C is incorrect for the same reason. Question 37. If you type 1345.9873 in a cell on a worksheet, what will Excel display by default? A. 1346.0 B. 1345.99 C. 1345.987 D. 1345.9873 The correct answer is B. Excel rounds numeric values to two decimal places for display by default. Answers A, C, and D are incorrect because they include the wrong number of decimal places. Question 38. You have changed the font, foreground color, and background color of a cell on your worksheet to match your corporate style. Now you want to apply those choices of color and font to other cells on the worksheet. How should you proceed? A. Use autofill to copy the format. B. Use Ctrl plus C to copy the format and then Ctrl plus V to paste it. C. Use the format painter to copy the format. D. Use a formula to copy the format. The correct answer is C. The format painter tool lets you copy formatting from a cell and apply that formatting to other cells without altering their contents. Answer A is incorrect because autofill copies values, not formats. Answer B is incorrect because copy and paste overwrite the values in the destination cells. Answer D is incorrect because formulas work with values, not with formats. Question 39. You have created a bar chart of data from your worksheet. Now you want to see the same data as a pie chart instead. What should you do? A. Delete the bar chart and use the chart wizard to create a new pie chart from the same data. B. Use the mouse to drag the bars from the bar chart until they form a pie shape. C. Right-click the bar chart, select chart type, and change the type to pie chart. D. Select the chart and then select pie chart from the format menu. The correct answer is C. The chart type menu item lets you quickly convert a chart to a different type. Answer A is incorrect because it requires more work to have the same effect. Answer B is incorrect because you can't drag the bars in that fashion. Answer D is incorrect because the format menu does not include commands for chart types. Question 40. You'd most likely use a database application to do the following, A. Track appointments. B. Store important data. C. Type letters. D. Send email. The correct answer is A. B. A database's main purpose is to store data, but if that data happens to be appointments, you can certainly track them using a database. Answer C is incorrect. Use a word processor to type letters. Answer D is incorrect because you can't send email from a database. Question 41. Which of the following are legitimate database objects? A. Tables. B. Mail merge documents. C. Queries. D. Forms. The correct answer is A, C, D. Answer B is incorrect. You use a word processor to create mail merge documents. Question 42. Which is the best definition for a primary key? A. The field on which two tables are related. B. The first field in a table. C. The table's only auto number field. D. The field that uniquely identifies each record in the table. The correct answer is D. Answer A is incorrect because tables can be related on non key fields. Answer B is incorrect because a field's position within the table has no bearing on whether it's a primary key. Answer C is incorrect, although primary key fields are often auto number fields, a table can have an auto number field that isn't a primary key. Question 43. Which data type is the best choice for a field that must accommodate integer values between 0 and 255? A byte. B integer. C single. D double. The correct answer is A. Answers B, C, and D are all much larger than necessary. Question 44. Identify the following as a one-to-many relationship or a one-to-one -one relationship. A. Customers aren't limited in the number of orders they may have open at any given time. B. Each employee can handle more than one account. C. Each employee can list only one address. D. Each order may contain multiple items. E. Each employee may have multiple appointments for any given day. The correct answer is A, B, D, and E represent one-to-many relationships. Answer C is the only one-to-one -one relationship. Question 45. You want to limit entries to values between 10 and 100, and a data type alone won't get the job done. What else can you do? A. Use validation text to alert the user to the restrictions. B. Set the validation rule property to the following expression, 
equals 10 and equals 100. See nothing, you must update incorrect entries as you find them. Deset the field size property to 100. The correct answer is B. Answer A is incorrect because the validation text property simply relays information, it doesn't actually restrict the value. Answer C is incorrect. Answer D is incorrect, that setting isn't valid for a number data type. Question 46. Identify the ways you can find specific data in a table or form. A. Use the find command. B. Apply a filter. C. Use the magnifying tool. D. Run a query. The correct answer is A, B, D. Answer C is incorrect, there isn't any such tool, although you can use a similar type tool to zoom in on data. Question 47. Where's the best spot for page numbers on a report? A. The details section. B. The report header. C. The page footer. D. Any group footer. The correct answer is C. Is the best spot for page numbering in a report because that text is printed on each page. Answer A is incorrect because the detail section would print a page number for each record in the report. Answer B is wrong because the page number would appear only once at the beginning of the report. Answer D is incorrect because a group footer appears at the bottom of each group and could appear several times on one page or not at all. Question 48. To sort data by the customer name in ascending order, you do which of the following? A. With the customer's form or table open, click the sort ascending tool. B. Choose sort ascending from the records menu. C. Select the customer name field and click the filter by selection tool. D. Select the customer name field and click the sort ascending tool. The correct answer is D. Answer A is incorrect because you must select the field first. Answer B is incorrect for the same reason and because the sort ascending option is not available from the records menu, you must select sort first. Answer C is incorrect because the filter by selection tool doesn't sort. Question 49. To print just pages 1 through 10 in a 30-page report, you do the following, A. Click the print tool and then enter 1 to 10. B. Press Ctrl plus P and select the selected records option. C. Choose print from the file menu and then enter 1 and 10 in the from and the to controls, respectively. D. Choose print from the file menu and then enter 1 to 10 in the pages control. The correct answer is C. Answer A is incorrect because the print tool prints every page. Answer B is incorrect because there is no selected records option when printing a report. Answer D is incorrect because you must enter the beginning and ending pages in different controls. Question 50. Identify the following as a one-to-many relationship or a one-to-one relationship. A. Customers aren't limited in the number of orders they may have open at any given time. B. Each employee can handle more than one account. C. Each employee can list only one address. D. Each order may contain multiple items. E. Each employee may have multiple appointments for any given day. The correct answer is A. B. D. E. Answer C is the only one-to-one relationship.